Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Transnet announced its intentions this week to pursue acquisitions in South Africa and the rest of the region. Terence Screamer was at the group's interim results and joins me to talk about this and other issues that arose. Hi Terence. Nice to know. Is it surprising that Transnet plans to add mergers and acquisitions to its growth agenda? I think yes and no. I think uh, this, it's surprising in the sense that this is a state-owned company that really is there for a dual mandate. So uh, the one would be to a developmental mandate and the second would be a commercial mandate. And its key role is to provide the economic freight logistics infrastructure needed to move South Africa's goods out of the country to support exports and also move goods into the country to keep uh, trade going and, and uh, inflation in check. So it's not just about a business about growing uh, for the sake of growth, but I think what's happened in, in South Africa is that because of the very weak um, uh, economic climate, uh, Transnet had a massive build program. So it was an organic growth program called the Market Demand Strategy. And they're pulling in their horns quite significantly around that strategy spending a lot less on that organic growth strategy. And I think they're looking at other ways to grow, grow the business uh, uh, so that they have the platforms to uh, stay competitive and the platforms for, for future investment should growth uh, uh, come and return. So we now have a, a build and buy strategy that's emerging and it's a fairly sizable war chest that they've said they've set aside. It's a 20 billion rand war chest which uh, th they'll be looking at both acquisitions in South Africa and on the continent, mostly. And uh, they talk about um, sort of evolving the business to a 3PL, 4PL, which is uh, jargon in the, the freight logistics of being more, more integrated with the customer, you know, r right through the supply chain. And in South Africa, they say they're going to be targeting this uh, fourth party type logistic where the gaps are. And in the region, they're looking at maybe replicating a little bit more some of their strengths in South Africa. So uh, liquid bulk's a big thing in South Africa. They move, they have the pipelines for petrol and diesel and crude. And um, they also have uh, 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 big port terminals and storage capacity for liquid bulk, but they also do uh, uh, container trade. Uh, so I think they'll be looking, and then obviously the railways business. And I think there are opportunities that are probably going to arise across the continent in those areas, and they feel they want to participate in those, and then I suppose close some of the strategic gaps uh, in trying to be a fully a fully end-to-end uh, -end freight logistics partner to South African customers by making certain strategic acquisitions uh, at home. So it's going to be interesting to see how it evolves. No real announcements yet on what um, uh, on their targets or anything like that but I imagine we're going to start seeing those in the not too distant future. What is happening with the group's capital program in light of the economic slowdown? Well as I said I think this it's the build and buy strategy but the build side of it and um, is definitely the horns are being pulled in there so we we saw already last year um, their capex fell uh, of under the MDS or the market demand strategy from a sort of a steadily rising trend since uh, the 2010-2012 period, uh, fell for the first time to 29 billion rand in the year, from a, a peak of 33 billion in the, the previous year, and are expecting to spend around 26 billion this year. That's nothing to be sneezed at, it's still significant. But in terms of South Africa's big infrastructure drives and having a counter-cyclical investment strategy, this pulling, it, pulling back from this big capital programs is very pro-cyclical and uh, uh, is probably not going to lift um, a lot of businesses or, or support a lot of businesses that we're hoping that the infrastructure program would provide some sort of stimulus to the economy. And I think uh, Transnet has just taken a very sort of commercial look at this. They, they don't want to be in a position like other state-owned companies where they have to go with a begging bowl to um, uh, the National Treasury either asking for guarantees or other sort of injections. So I think they're taking a sort of a commercial view and a prudent view and they're looking at what they call uh, uh, it's a validated demand um, that will, demi that will uh, sort of drive the way they spend capital. So until there's validated demand, they're not going to go massively ahead of that demand. So we can see particularly in the areas of commodities there's a pullback 
iron ore is definitely going to be slow in terms of the investments on that corridor. The coal, while they're bullish uh, about a recovery in coal uh, in the, in the sh short term, we've seen the coal prices lift, and we may see coal prices lift even further with this Donald Trump victory in the US. Um, but uh, they, they're still saying that for the Waterberg, you know, they're not seeing those mines uh, developed yet, so there's going to be a slower pace of rollout. So they'll match, uh, they'll match more what the sort of development of those coal resources. Um, and then they're looking at the Botswana eventually as providing a channel to, to, um, to market for the Botswana coal fields. So they're still on the horizon, on the, on the radar. But in the next seven years, which is the MDS horizon, we're definitely seeing a, a, sh a smaller budget than was initially anticipated. And uh, that is going to have an imp impact on how much it's going to stimulate the economy. And I suppose we see it in, in the, the suffering that a lot of the companies around the project economy uh, are feeding in the consulting engineering space, as well as in the, uh, the construction space where things have been under pressure for some time. Tronson also commented on a number of other issues, including state capture and the possible ratings downgrade. Yes, on state capture, Transnet's name did come up in uh, the former public protector, Tuli Manansela's report. However, it was really a regurgitation of some of the media reportage around whether the contracts that were uh, sort of uh, first given to McKinsey as a consulting company, and then they subcontracted to a company called Regiments Capital, who in turn seemed to have, uh, uh, there seemed to be a seeding of certain contracts across the, this trillion capital, which has a link to an associate of the Gupta family. Uh, it did get mentioned in the report, but there was no, there was no observation, as there were, say, for instance, with Eskin. There was no firm observation. In fact, the public protector suggested that this should be part of a second phase of any investigation. So nothing really very harmful against Transnet, but I think uh, what uh, CEO Sia Bongagama said this week is that regardless of that, their reputation is precious. And uh, this, what he described as a civil war between trillion executives and regiments, which, had, which has now bubbled into the, the public domain, uh, is damaging to Transnet. So once their contracts are expired, I, I imagine, uh, they, know they, they have no intention of renewing any more work with either trillion or regiments. So that, that, that was sort of putting a line under the issue. Uh, whether it still comes up in a future public protector probe, we'll have to see. Um, and then the other big issue of the moment, as you mentioned, is uh, does South Africa get downgraded in December? And uh, I think Transnet sort of wanted to give the indication that they're being fairly proactive on this. While you know, dismissing any suggestion, they think there will definitely be a downgrade um, to South Africa's sovereign rating. They stress that they are a 100% state-owned company, therefore if there is a downgrade, they go, their credit rating, which is currently uh, a, a, an investment-grade credit rating, will be affected, so they, they, they could be junked. And therefore they had to look at all their, their debt, and about 30 billion of that debt had covenants, uh, which with, with some repayment or costs being triggered if in the event of a downgrade to junk. So they've gone through that book and they've been approaching those lenders uh, on an individual basis. And they say over 90% of those lenders have decided to relax those triggers so that in the event of a downgrade, uh, Transnet has sort of cushioned itself from any um, unexpected demands from the lenders. And they hope to sort of finalise or wrap up the, the other 10% or so in the weeks that come. However, again, they, they stress that that's not a it's not a, a view that there would definitely be an, a downgrade, and I suppose now we're going to have to wait and see how all the political developments, both at home and abroad, are affecting the way the rating agencies are going to view South Africa, um, and I suppose we'll have to wait and see till December what that action will be, and then to see what it will what impact it could have on companies such as Transnet as well as other state-owned companies that have got big debt on, on their balance sheets. Thank you. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.